From the University of California, Irvine, this is UCI Minds Spotlight on Care, the podcast where we share stories, experiences, tips, and advice on caring for loved ones affected by Alzheimer's and other dementias. Welcome to Spotlight on Care. Uh, This is Steve O'Leary. I'm one of the co-hosts for this podcast, along with Virginia Nave. And uh, we're really excited about this. Virginia, why don't you give us a little insight as to what our topic's going to be and um, your perspective on it. Thanks, Steve. I'm really happy to be here today doing this with you. Today's topic is early signs of dementia. And in a few minutes, we will, Steve will introduce our guest visiting with us today. But first, I want to share one of the first signs that I had from my mom that something just wasn't quite right. Uh, Mom's best friend, Betty, who lived right across the street, called me one day and asked me if I'd notice anything unusual about mom. I said, uh, well, no, not really. And she said, well, let me tell you this. Um, the other night was our monthly bridge game with the gang, and it was mom's turn to provide the munchies and the snacks as they all took turns with that responsibility. Betty said she had gone over to see if mom needed any help and noticed mom was running around the house trying to find the deck of cards. Betty knew right where they were. They've been in mom's living room in the same drawer for years. Then Betty said, do you need help preparing the food, Helen? And mom was busy pouring some peanuts into a bowl. And that was the only bit of food that mom had planned for the evening, a bowl of peanuts. Betty said that had never happened before. And she thought she was telling me that I should start to pay attention to what was happening to mom. And Betty was right. That was one of my first wake up calls. So Steve, I want to know, was there something that you first noticed about your wife, Patty? that gave you some concern. What was that? Yeah, it's kind of a sad story. Uh, Patty and I worked together. Um, We owned a company, uh, an advertising agency together, and uh, she was the controller and she worked reported to the CFO. So we didn't have a lot of day-to-day activity except when we got home. So on one occasion, we're having a glass of wine and she says, you know, I just think we need to hire more people. Um, I'm I don't think that I don't think we have enough people to handle the workload, and I'm going. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me because we probably had to let go in the last year five or six people, so we had fewer people working. So I said, "Well, why don't you talk to, uh, you know, to John, the CFO, and see what he has to say?" Not thinking anything about it, and then I put it out of my mind. About five months later, Patty chimes in with the same story. Now we're two or three more people down. The nature of our business was up and down. And, uh, and she said the same thing. I, I just don't think that we have enough people working in finance to handle the workload with HR and finance. And I think that we really need more people. And I said, okay, well, why don't you, why don't you speak to John? I was trying to not get directly involved since John reported to me. And uh, in retrospect, what was happening, she was having a lot of difficulty continuing to perform the same function she'd performed for several years. And I didn't listen to the call, her request, her plea. So that's my example. Um, We're really pleased to have someone with us today. Uh, His name is Bill Edwards. He's a longtime friend of both Virginia's and mine. And uh, Bill's going to share his story uh, of some of the signs that he saw in his uh, his relationship with his wife, Nancy. So, Bill, welcome to Spotlight on Care. Why don't you give us a little of background about you and Nancy and your journey together? Well, thank you, Virginia and Steve. It's very nice to be here. Uh, Nancy and I were married 47 years. We got married in 1968, and uh, we traveled the world. We lived in several countries. One of our daughters born in Indonesia, one in Alaska, 
was in the oil business for a long time before going out on my own and forming my own company, which has been active here in uh, Southern California for 20 years now. Uh, Nancy was a medical professional. I'll come back to that later. Um, but in 1998, uh, on our 30th wedding anniversary time, began to notice changes that were going on in Nancy, real dramatic changes. Uh, personality. She had a very outgoing, calm, friendly, always caring um, personality, and that changed. She got angry, easy. She was scowling more than smiling. Um, she was difficult to deal with. She always dressed perfectly, and then she stopped dressing perfectly and didn't seem to really care much about how she looked. Um, she also was always on time and kept to a schedule and all of a sudden stopped doing that. Well, of course, uh, I had no idea what was going on. Um, I didn't even, I knew what the word Alzheimer's was, but never had any exposure to it before then. So of course I got mad, you know, cause I was a perfectionist and she needed to be doing the right things. Right. And she needed to be the old Nancy. Well, she wasn't the old Nancy. And, um, she, she declined from there. Um, she was a medical professional that needed to chart and charting became impossible. Kind of like what Steve was saying with Patty, Nancy was no longer able to do her job. She couldn't chart patients. And she told me that uh, she really was just, there weren't a lot of patients and she really wasn't very busy anymore. Well, what actually was the case was she really wasn't seeing patients anymore. But of course, I didn't realize what was going on. And I got angry again, of course, <laughs> and said, you've got to straighten up and fly right here, kid. What's going on here? Really very, you know, very em em empathetic for me. You know, I didn't, I really was very stupid about what was going on. There was no Alzheimer's in her family and um, going back several generations. In fact, her mother passed away at 99 and a half, still driving, which she shouldn't have been, and living in her own house. And so I just figured Nancy was going to be the same way. And it went on for, uh, got worse and worse. Uh, and she had accidents, uh, which she never had before. I was the one that had the accidents and drove up the insurance cost. And uh, she lost keys. Um, I tried to get her to go to see a psychologist, you know, and see what was going on. She fought that. She fought going to a doctor. Now, what's really key here is that Nancy's medical practice involved dealing with Alzheimer's patients. So in retrospect, Nancy knew exactly what was going on and didn't want to admit it. Uh, one of the kind of funny things was that she came to me and said she really wanted to change careers. She wanted to go into the insurance selling business. I mean, this is totally separate than anything she'd ever done before. And she wanted to start selling long-term care insurance because she thought that was going to be needed. <laughs> and of course, it was too late by then for us to get it for her. I've had it since then. Um, so what happened? Well, um, in 2003, um, it was really getting so bad that she no longer worked. She sat at home. Uh, she didn't admit anything was wrong. She didn't drive anymore. Um, she, didn't, she didn't do anything really, uh, not even go to the grocery store. And of course this was getting worse and worse. And I was at that time going annually to the UCI executive health uh, clinic to get my annual physical. So I asked the doctor when I went to get my physical, I said, uh, you know, I think there's some things wrong with my wife. I'd like to get her to get a physical. And finally I talked her into doing that. And so I dropped her off since she didn't drive anymore. I dropped her off at the Gottschall Center. I'm not saying that correctly, but you know what I mean, the UCI. And she went in for the physical and I got a call 30 minutes later saying she can't follow directions. She can't do any exercises. She can't do anything. So we've told her that the physical is finished. Now, I, I neglected to mention, Steve, that Nancy was a marathoner. She ran the LA Marathon three times. So being in shape was, until this came along, was not ever a problem. Um, 
we did have a wine every once in a while, <clears throat> but she had a good uh, she had a good diet. So anyway, when I went to visit the doctor, he said, um, "Okay, Nancy, we'll uh, we'll come back in a week for the results." And then he called me and said. I think I know what's wrong, but uh, let me work on this a bit. And he called me and said, I think it's Alzheimer's disease. Well, I mean, that was a shock to us. And um, we went back in a week later, went into the doctor's office. He shut the door and he looked at Nancy and he says, Nancy, you're a medical professional who deals with Alzheimer's. You know exactly what's wrong, don't you? And so then we all cried. Okay. Yeah. And, that's a sad story to that point, Bill. Let, let's go back and talk about one thing you mentioned that I think might be, deserve a little more attention. Um, what was your reaction? It, well, actually, you were talking about the fact that, you know, in, in hindsight, you didn't see all these things, and, and that's because you had no information or, or no knowledge of it. Could you talk a little bit about the frustration you felt at that time? Well, there was no knowledge, and, and this was just a change in the person I'd known for since 1965, and uh, who was very fastidious, took very good care of herself, was uh, uh, got lots of awards for her uh, her dealing with patients in her medical work, and uh, there was something wrong, but she wouldn't talk about it, yeah. and. Uh, I kept saying, what's wrong? You know, what's the problem? And I didn't know, I didn't know the signs. I had no idea. How, how were you dealing with all of this when you, when you were going through these? Extremely frustrated. Um, I couldn't understand why she no longer could work, why she could no longer write. I knew there was something wrong, but I couldn't get her to go to the doctor. She also stopped reading um, she used to read novels all the time, and she just said that she didn't have time anymore. <laughs> and of course, she couldn't didn't have time because she couldn't read. Okay. It got extremely frustrating. Our marriage really went to, with all due respect, uh, to more of a brother sister relationship, uh, and not liking each other. But I wasn't going to throw her out of the house. I wasn't going to get rid of my wife, you know. And she she, she just. Um, our daughters were very upset about it, um, and um, they couldn't get her to do anything either. Well, Bill, what, what happened after you got the diagnosis? How, how did things change? Did, did that help, or did that hurt? Well, let me tell you how we got the diagnosis. So the doctor at, at uh, UCI's executive health group um, said, you know, downstairs we have, uh, we have a testing center. And let me see if I can get you in to just get some tests done and see what's going on. And so we were introduced to Dr. Malcolm Dick at that point in time. And this is around 2003. And he put Nancy through all the tests that you go through. And, uh, of course, she couldn't do a lot of the things that she was supposed to, you know, couldn't remember. The dexterity wasn't there. Um, Medically, she was in great shape. I mean, her blood pressure, everything was great, uh, uh, which will come back later, and I'll tell you what, what that mean, meant. But um, we went in for the, uh, for the uh, diagnosis, and I brought my daughters into town, and we sat in the room, and she'd had the, you know, the, the brain scans and the whole thing, Okay. So Dr. Dick gets all of that out and he starts to explain it. And he says, um, this is a famous story that I think you and Virginia know. He said, Nancy, why don't you come up here and, and look at the results and tell me what's going on? Because you're the medical professional that's dealt with Alzheimer's before. And what he did there is he gave her her ego back and her sense of well-being because he said, you're the medical professional, you tell me. And of course, she went through the, she went through the test and told him exactly what was going on. So um, once that happened, then Nancy became a research subject at UCI. That was when we were introduced to UCI Mind. And um, so Nancy was monitored and uh, had access to the senior care doctors through um, through most of her disease. And uh, when she died, she donated her brain. So I like to say Nancy's wandering around somewhere being tested <laughs> again, somewhere around the world. Um, 
Nancy was, when, at 2008, Nancy had gotten to the point where she could not do anything. She couldn't tolerate caregivers. And so we put her into Silverado, which was total care. And she passed away uh, seven years later in 2015. So Nancy's journey post-diagnosis uh, was 12 years. And part of that was because she was in such great shape. <laughs> Physically, she was in really good shape. That wasn't the problem. You know, Bill, you, you talked a little bit about your relationship changing. And I know that's a hard topic to talk about. Um, but I think that might be beneficial for some of us, you know, who are just starting to deal with it and understanding, you know, uh, the process that you went through. You said, you know, you, you had a mother or, or fa- sister-brother relationship. What, what, what happened to cause that? Um. She had no interest in anything else, um, and uh, she barely tolerated me being around. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and and she had nowhere to go and and had to be, you know, taken care of. So I think she finally decided she'd stay. Um, but I will tell you that once the diagnosis was done and we knew what was, what had, what was going on, our relationship totally changed again. It went back to where it was before, but with this disease, we became very close again, extremely close. And uh, I tried to make up for all the mistakes I made by by taking as good a care as I, of her as I could until she passed away. Well, that's you know, I, I think that's a true story. Most many of us have gone through not seeing everything because we didn't know what to look for. But uh, if you had to sum up now, you know, thinking back in retrospect, if you were talking to somebody brand new who says, you know, things just don't seem right, what should I be looking for? You know, what would you say to them in terms of, you know, your perspective of, of how, you, how your consciousness might, might, cha- might have changed now knowing what you know? Well, before I say that, I, I've got to tell you that the number one thing that we can do, all of us, is education is getting the word out there about what the symptoms are, you know, through, through podcasts like this, but uh, education, 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 so that when we reach a certain age, now Nancy was only 55. So she was pretty young when this happened. uh, We, we can understand what's going on because we had no information. Okay. We, we didn't know anything about this. My solution was go to the doctor, see what the doctor has to say. And uh, she did eventually go to the doctor. She wouldn't tell me what the doctor said because <laughs> she knew what was going on. Mm-hmm. I think if, if you see really big changes in a person, then that's probably not normal. And it may not be something they're actually controlling. It may not be where they say, well, I just don't want to be around you anymore, you know, and, and mean it in, in the way you might think it is because there's a problem in the marriage or the relationship. It may be because they have actually changed. Watch for signs of change um, and then be sensitive. <laughs> that was what I really wasn't for many years. Well, that's a great piece of advice about, uh, about being aware of change, you know, and uh, I think that's really sound advice. Well, Bill, we both want to thank you. Virginia and I want to thank you so much for taking your time here and uh, and sharing your experience. Um, we really appreciate it, and we know the listeners will, will as well. Thank so you thanks so again. much. Thanks again. It's an opportunity to, to share and all the work that you're doing. Well, thank you, uh, Bill, for helping us get the word out there. That's our intention with this podcast. And um, we are sure that your information has been helpful to a lot of people who are experiencing the same things. You know, there are a lot of similarities. Uh, You with a spouse, me with a mom. Mom was in great health, and she knew she was in great health. You know, she didn't require any prescription drugs. She was just, she was healthy, and then this happened. So anyway, thank you again so much. Next month, I will be interviewing a guest on the difficulties with getting that initial diagnosis and we'll probably throw in a lot of initial signs and symptoms of the disease in the beginning as well. Um, 
But you know, when you know in your heart that something isn't right with your parent or your loved one, best to get on it. So thank you everyone for listening today and please join us next time on Spotlight on Care. Thank you. Spotlight on Care is produced by the University of California, Irvine Institute for Memory Impairments and Neurological Disorders, UCI Mind. Please subscribe to the Spotlight on Care podcast wherever you listen. For more information, visit mind, M-I-N-D dot U-C-I dot E-D-U.